Hi, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's talk is going to be on the thyroid adrenal gut access. Basically, our brain talking to all of our glandular systems. We're going to show how stress can mess this up. We're also going to talk about the communication or the beautiful domino effect that needs to occur for healthy glandular or physiological function. And this is important. What this means is you looking well, feeling good, and performing well all at the same time. So again, we have our brain up here. Our brain actually produces some stimulating hormones. So in our first cascade here, we have the brain talking to the thyroid. So our brain produces thyroid stimulating hormone. This is really important because we need that to kind of knock the first domino over for thyroid function. Now the biggest mistake most doctors make when assessing thyroid function, you can see they're actually looking at a hormone that has nothing to do with the thyroid. The thyroid is producing T3 and T4 essentially. This is a secondary hormone. It's a really a brain hormone Re released from the pituitary and then the thyroid then feeds back by releasing T3 and T4 and depending on how much T4 and T3 are there, the TSH will go down or up. If T3 and T4 is adequate, TSH will drop. It's an inverse hormone. Now interesting enough, TSH is more sensitive to T4, so higher levels of T4 will knock down that TSH and you'll think that you're in normal range for your um, thyroid test, but you aren't because a lot of people can't make that T4 to T3 conversion. So that's a little snafu that we see in the HP, HTA axis, if you will. So the first domino, the brain talking to the thyroid. The thyroid then we speak to the adrenal glands. You see, we're going to have ACTH, and that's really going to be coming out from the brain. That's adrenal corticotropic hormone from the pituitary that stimulates cortisol and adrenaline. And depending on how much cortisol and adrenaline is produced, that will feed back up to the brain. And again, here we're going to see our sympathetic nervous system. So depending on how much cortisol and adrenaline is being produced, that's going to tell us how much fight or flight reaction we're having. So essentially, we have the sympathetic nervous system on one side. And we have the parasympathetic nervous system on the other side. And imagine a nice little domino effect here, a nice little uh, seesaw, if you will. And we have our parasympathetic nervous system just like that. So if sympathetic is heavier, right? Sympathetic's higher right there. Parasympathetic's lower. We're going to be driving this whole cortisol adrenaline response. That's going to drive and talk to our gut. The sympathetic nervous system has an effect on our gut. And our gut responds via our enteric nervous system. Our enteric nervous system is actually, there's just as many um, nervous system or neuron cells in our enteric nervous system than there is in our whole central nervous system. And the gut microbiota plays a huge impact in feeding back to the brain. So if we are taking antibiotic exposure, refined sugar, if we have leaky gut, infections, dysbiosis, higher amounts of bad bacteria in relationship to good bacteria, we're taking our fight or flight system, we're driving this up, that's gonna have an effect on our enteric nervous system, right? We're gonna to start to develop leaky gut as a byproduct. Now this is our intestinal tract right here. I'll just draw IT so you know that's intestinal tract. We have mucosal membrane barrier system that lines our gut. You can see IgA is one of our big mucosal membrane barriers. Now when we're having more cortisol, more stress, more sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system response, that's actually gonna affect our immune system and our gut. So we're actually gonna start seeing less IgA, less IgA, and that's gonna make it easier for critters to kind of make their way in there, right? When we have more sympathetic nervous system, that's gonna decrease our hydrochloric acid. With low hydrochloric acid, we're not going to be able to, to signal to our pancreas to produce enzymes. We're not going to be able to trigger our gallbladder to release bile. So we're not going to be able to digest protein or fat adequately. So that sets us up for a world of hurt because now we start having nutritional deficiencies. So we have lower IgA, and now it's really easy for, let's say, undigested food particles in our intestinal tract to make their way out into the bloodstream. And this gets our immune system really revved up because we're not used to seeing bacteria or undigested food particles, things that belong in the gut tract on the outside in the bloodstream. So that really revs up our immune system. And again, that's going to fire our sympathetic nervous system. That's going to fire more cortisol and adrenaline. 
That's going to fire our guts. We're going to have more leaky guts. And that's also going to stress our thyroid as well. Uh, one of the key things that we see with chronic stress is we see this whole HPA axis dysfunction. So you can imagine like there being a little mini thermostat right in the middle here. This is my little mini thermostat. And we all know how thermostats work in our house. You set your thermostat, let's say for 70 degrees, it gets to 75, now the AC kicks on. If it gets to 65, the heat kicks on. So this is our little thermostat that talks to our thyroid, that talks to our adrenals, that talks to our gut. And when we have more sympathetic response, when we have more physical, chemical, and emotional stressors, right? Here's our triangle of health, physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. All of these stressors interplay on our DNA. This is our DNA here. If we're continuing to increase stress, increase stress, increase stress, we're going to turn on genes that make us feel, frankly, like crap. So we really want to address the root cause of what's going on. So you can see physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Here's our DNA, and we're making ourselves feel like crap because we're firing up our sympathetic nervous system. We're increasing our adrenaline. Our gut microbes don't like us too well, so we're getting negative responses back to the brain via our enteric nervous system. We're firing up our sympathetics. We're not going to convert T4 to T3 well, and we're going to have a flat cortisol rhythm. So again, you can see how the thyroid affects the adrenals, affects the gut, and then eventually affects our immune system because, again, the strongest mechanism, according to the scientific literature for autoimmune condition, is leaky gut. There's a handful of scientists showing that leaky gut, you can't have, le you can't have autoimmune conditions without having leaky gut. So hopefully everyone got some good information um, from this video, a little more complicated, but you can see how everything's connected. And if we have a reductionistic allopathic view, it's easy to miss the interweb, how everything kind of gets connected. So if you're having any gut issues or autoimmune issues or thyroid issues, again, this is the perfect time to reach below, get my contact information and feel free and reach out. Again, subscribe to our newsletters and YouTube channels and there'll be more videos coming your way. Thanks.